He was a tremendous Christian testimony in those California schools, too. They all knew Christian kids because it was just chaos in, that, in the schools. It was absolutely terrible. But I'll tell you, these kids stood. They really did, and they were a testimony to the other school kids. Make any difference how they grouped off and how they were using drugs? No, we are Christians. We are born-again Christians. And they even had trouble with a lot of the teachers over it, of different demands the teachers made upon you kids, uh, and you just absolutely refused and said, no, we, we won't do that. We're born-again Christians, and we have our principles that uh, in God that mean more to us than anything in the world, and they really stood their ground. We've brought you another telecast of the lives of two people. These people, like all the others that you see here, they haven't been paid for being here. They are here to share Jesus Christ with you and what he has done in their lives. I don't believe that you could be any kind of honest person sitting out there and not know that these two people have told you the truth. There couldn't be any purpose in the world for them to come here and relate to you what they have if there wasn't any truth in it. Because this isn't something that happened yesterday. They've been living these lives for a long time. And you could ask any one of them and they would say, that life is more wonderful today in Jesus Christ than it was that first day they met him. Yeah. I can assure you that Keith would tell you that same God is in that church every time I walk <laughs> in the door of it Amen. that I felt the first time I ever went there. I know the world is terrified. The world is scared because they know that something is going to happen and something is going to happen. Jesus Christ is coming back to earth again. But all oh, this world, what this earth is headed for. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I do know that the Bible says that it will. There's going to be pestilence. There's going to be famine. There's going to be the worst famine hit this world that could ever be imagined. Terrible famine. I don't know what's going to bring it about, but I know that it's going to happen because the Bible says so. You hear so much today about survivors, and people are gathering themselves together in little groups, and they're grouping off here and there, and they're storing up food and doing all these things. And the amazing thing about that, a lot of them are in California, and the Lord says, woe be unto them that live in the coastal areas during the last days. <laughs> So yeah, that doesn't make much sense. And now, you know I understand people saving because the Lord gave even an ant enough sense to, to store up for tomorrow uh, in existence. But still and all, without God, it has no meaning. The only way you're going to be a survivor is in Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Now, if you put your your all your canned goods and your dried beans and corn and rice and everything in Arkansas or through the Midwest. How about if a tornado came along and strung your cans all over the place and your beans and rice? See, you, there, you can't put, there isn't any dependence at all that you can put in anything outside of Jesus Christ. That's going to be the survivor. That it, it just seems so foolish, these people, and they're spending millions of dollars on all these different uh, survival uh, trips that they're going on all over the place. And it has absolutely no meaning at all because uh, someone would come and, and kill you and take what you had anyway because in such violence as, as we have now and what that would bring, why the people would be coming out of the cities by the millions, slaughtering and killing for food. You'd be better off to boil your grass at night, you know, <laughs> when nobody's around. It won't do any good. All these things are just foolishness. And the only way 
anyone is going to survive is in God. That's right. There's no other way. I don't care where they are or what they try to store up uh, to save in a time like that. It won't do any good unless you have God and His Son, Christ Jesus. The Bible says that unless God shortens the time that no flesh will survive. That's what the Bible says. And the Word of God is going to be fulfilled. So don't put your treasures in warehouses and imagine that without God that you're going to survive it. The unsaved, the, the, there's a restlessness. There's a searching in the hearts and in the souls of people everywhere. They know that something is going to happen. People feel it. They sense it. They know it. They know that it's here. But the unsaved, those who are out of the realm of Jesus Christ, they don't know what to do about it. Now, I have the answer to this problem. To this problem, to all others. And it's in Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the place to put our trust and our faith. We can't put our trust and our faith in the economy of our nation because we see it just sliding and just going and falling apart and the prices. We know that it's a matter of time that the dollar as we know it today won't even be in existence, that people are going to be a number. We're already a number. But the thing of it is, is to accept that number. And the ones who refuse to accept it, they're going to not be able to buy or to sell or to exchange or any of those things. Now, the computer system has brought us right into that. We're right into it. But now, how could people imagine when already people are Social Security numbers and their numbers on this and numbers on that? If you stored up all the food in the world, they'd just come and arrest you on some trumped up charge and take, have your canned goods under their arm as they're going down to, the, uh, down to the jail. So it wouldn't do any good. There's none of those things going to do any good. But Jesus said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Never call upon me and I will hear thee and answer thee and show thee great and mighty works. That's the promise of God unto us. Remember that he's the same God that put the matzah on the ground, the same God that sent the ravens. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the heaven and earth may pass away, but the word of God will never fail, and Jesus will never fail. There's the place to put your trust and your faith. And you, the, as you see things getting shaky or all around you, you don't hear any uh, promises from any area any longer that things are under control because the government knows that things are not under control. You see, the government has no money. They have no money. I heard some people talking recently about uh, uh, an army base suing the federal government. I said, well, what good, what possible good do you think that that could do? The government has no money. The money they have is our money. It's your money. So if they sued them and they won the case, then the next thing that would happen, our taxes would go higher than what they are now to pay back the money that was taken out of there. The government doesn't have any money. That was the tragedy of the government designating the people's money for the purposes that it has been designated for and people being forced into paying tax dollars and then the federal government being allowed to just take it and designate it wherever they felt like it because it wasn't theirs to, to hand out to anyone. Any bills in government where monies and grants were handed out should have been voted in by the people because the government is just like a bank. That's your money they're spending. It isn't theirs because they don't have any. And every government official that's sitting there, while you're paying his salary and he's handing out your tax dollars, he is using your money to destroy the nation. 
That's exactly what it amounts to, and that's what's been going on for years. And uh, people just accepting it as a, a, a yoke that was put upon them. But really, it, it, it isn't right at all. And any time uh, federal grants are handed out or monies are handed out, then it should be voted by the people. Because the people who are giving the money, they're not Santa Claus. They're, they're, they have no right to be giving it. They're giving your money. See things exactly as they are. I feel that my government has failed me. I feel that everything around me has failed me. But let me tell you that there is one who has never, ever failed me. As a matter of fact, he has always done over and above anything that I could ever imagine or believe to be possible for him to do. He has always been there when I needed him. In sickness, in health, in despair, in persecution, Jesus is always there. And he never fails to keep his promise to us. And if we are to be survivors, then we will survive in Jesus Christ because there is no other answer. Whoever you are, wherever you are, I challenge you. You've tried all these other things. You've looked to man, you've looked to government, you've looked to church, you've looked to all these things, but they have all seemed to fail. But there is one who will never fail. And he is just as close as your calling upon him. He said, anyone that comes to him, he will never turn them away. That is the promise of God unto you. Wherever you are, whoever you are, kneel down. Humble yourself before God. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. And let us hear from you. I want to hear from you this next week and have you say to me, Sister Alamo, I heard that telecast and I did what you asked me to do. I humbled myself before God and asked Him to forgive me of my sins and I asked Jesus to come into my heart. And I had such a beautiful supernatural experience in Jesus Christ and I'm really born again. Write to me this week. Write to Tony and Susan Alamo Christian Foundation, Box 398, A-L-M-A, -A, Arkansas. And tell me, you know, if I, I all, these letters mean so much to us. You have no idea what these letters mean to get mail like that and say, I was really born again because that's what we are all working for, to pay for these telecasts, that you can come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. We have a purpose, and that is to present the truth of Jesus Christ to you. After watching these telecasts and seeing as many people appear on here as you see, and all with the same testimony, of how Jesus Christ has changed their lives. I want you to be a survivor. And there is only one way that you're ever going to be a survivor, and that is in Christ Jesus. There is no hope in any other thing because he is standing now at the door. The door is opening into eternity. Today is the day of salvation because tomorrow may not ever come. And if I never saw you again, just to know that you are saved. The Lord bless you, and until the next time.